this is gonna be the full summary review of the Legion 9i, which is basically gonna be a summary of everything that I found out about it in like, you know, 10, 15 minutes. So top deals value comparison, this laptop definitely does not provide the best value out of all the laptops out there. And uh, performance wise, I was a little bit disappointed in certain ways as well. And we're gonna to get to all of those as we go through this. Unboxing the laptop is fairly simple. We got a small box, and then we also have a secondary box with the power adapters. And you do have two power adapters. You have a smaller USB-C power adapter, and then a bigger full 330 watt fat power adapter. And we did test performance on the USB-C power adapter, and you, we still got like 15,000 in time spy with the USB-C power adapter, which was very impressive to me. So it is possible to game on USB-C, not nearly as well as the full power adapter. And I love that you get both of them, but also I'm thinking like, well, some users aren't gonna want that and you're just adding additional cost to the all users when some people just aren't gonna want the, the small charger. So I would have actually preferred Lenovo to not include it, but give people an option to add it on uh, when they order the laptop. That would be much better in my opinion. Um, quality control on this machine was excellent. No issues, no dead pixels, no loose keycaps, no issues that I found at least uh, at all. The ports on this machine are good. Two Thunderbolt 4s uh, located on the rear of the device, HDMI 2.1. Ethernet port facing upwards, I like that. Nice RGB implementation along the rear of the laptop as well, power plug right here. Uh, interesting port placement for the USB-A right here. Uh, USB-C right here with the webcam shutter button. Only two USB-As on this laptop. That's a little bit low in my opinion. I would have rather had three for sure because I always have three plugged into my Blade 18. Headphone power, or headphone port right here. Headset adapter port really has microphone and headphones right there. Uh, and then a full size SD card slot is really great to see. I love that. Um, so the port selection on this overall is very good. Uh, it's just a little bit odd in having some of those ports in the corners of the laptop. Now I gotta give a huge shout out and thank you to Best Buy for sponsoring this episode. I wanna make it clear that I can say whatever I want about these laptops, all the pros, all the cons. That said, I have been a big fan of Best Buy for a long time. I have bought many laptops from Best Buy, talking dozens. I have used their return policy. I have used their extended warranty. Uh, I've never had an issue with either of those and I've always had good service. It's one of the main reasons I recommend them. Now, they asked me to cover all of the best deals that I could find on their website. So I went through and looked through hundreds of listings. Let's take a look. Now the next three laptops only have eight gigs of RAM. So I wanted to mention the Corsair Vengeance 16 gig DDR5 4800 RAM kit for those of you that decide to go with one of these eight gig laptops, because really you want 16 as a minimum. Now, since it's DDR5, it's okay to have single channel, but I generally recommend 32 gigs of RAM if you want to future-proof your laptop, uh, especially for the more RAM demanding games such as Hogwarts Legacy. One of my top budget laptops right now is the Lenovo Lock 15. This has a Ryzen 7 7840HS, which is the most recent generation of processors being released. It's a very good processor, but you only have eight gigs of memory here. So that's where the Corsair Vengeance memory upgrade comes into play here. RTX 4050 with six gigs of VRAM is gonna be able to play basically all of your games here at full HD with no problem. And the display at 144 Hertz uh, full HD, it's it's better than what's on the MSI laptops, but it's not necessarily the best display for under a thousand bucks, that's for sure. But it's still gonna be decent. Most people on a budget, I think, are gonna be pretty happy with this display. So 749, this is an absolute steal of a deal in my opinion. The Gigabyte Aorus 15 is another really great option. Biggest strength to the Aorus 15 is that it has a 144 Hertz 100% DCI-P rated display. Now I have not tested this personally myself. 144 Hertz up to 100% DCI-P3 color gamut. So that's pretty impressive. The processor is not really that powerful in this laptop for the money. And again, only eight gigs of RAM. You're gonna probably wanna get the Corsair Vengeance memory kit again. Definitely something to consider. Now, uh, between the lock and the Aorus, 
If you want a better display, go with the Aorus. If you want a better processor, go with the Lock 15. The Dell G15 is also under $900, currently $250 off. RTX 4050 and i7 13650 HX, which is a 14 core 20 thread CPU, which is a really great value for only $899. If you're a fan of Dell projects, definitely consider this one, but again, only eight gigs of memory, so the RAM kit link is also in the description. Now, if we step up to a little bit nicer machine, we've got the Lenovo Legion Slim 5, and I have reviewed this laptop in detail. I really liked it. We had good temps, uh, great all around performance from the Slim 5, and it's currently $380 off right now. Massive discount on the Slim 5, which makes this one of the more attractive options around the $1,100 price point. Now, you do get a QHD display in this, 2560 by 1600, and it's 16 by 10 aspect ratio. So if you're a fan of that, that's an important thing to consider. Uh, usually 16 by 10 aspect ratio laptops cost a little bit more. So you get the latest gen Ryzen processor, 16 gigs of RAM, no need to upgrade, and a 4060, which has a little bit more VRAM and a bit more performance than the 4050. Next up, we have the MSI Stealth 14, 165 hertz, full HD, so 16 by 10 aspect ratio. This is an extremely portable laptop. I have done a review on this. This thing had shockingly good speakers on it, Great touchpad, Windows Hello, very fully featured laptop. I really like the Stealth 14. Um, the problems with this laptop, the processor is not as powerful. Uh, you got a vapor chamber in here, I like that. Um, the temps in this were also very, very good. Under four pounds for sure, super portable. Really, really like the Stealth 14 if you're in the portable laptop segment. MSI Crosshair 16. This is a 16 by 10 aspect ratio MSI laptop, but you gotta keep in mind that the display is not super high color gamut. That is definitely the biggest weakness of this machine for the money. So you get a 1920 by 1200 laptop display, an i7-13620H. So again, not as powerful of a CPU. It's gonna be good for gaming, but not as good for multi-core rendering as the HX processors. RTX 4070 for only 1199. Last but not least, we have one of my most highly recommended laptops, the Asus Tough F. 15. This is a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, but the nice thing about this laptop is the display quality is there. It's a 100% sRGB rated display, which is going to be a higher color gambit display than the Crosshair 16. Um, and this thing has got a, a nice solid build feel to it, but it doesn't have that much RGB flair to it. It's still fairly portable. Um, there's gonna be a, a, a sizable bezel along the bottom because it is a 16 by nine aspect ratio display. Uh, pretty decent port selection and a glass trackpad on here. RTX 4070, a one terabyte SSD, 1199. This thing is not the lowest we've seen the Tough F15 go down to, but at 1199, I still think it's a very good deal and one of the best bang for the buck RTX 4070 laptops on the market today. So those are my current top picks from Best Buy. Thanks again so much to them for sponsoring this episode. Let's get back to the review. We did check out the BIOS. It has a lot of features in there, but the key things in there are enabling CPU undervolting and you if you especially if you order this with the DDR5 6400 uh memory, then you're really going to want to upgrade your uh your BIOS settings to take advantage of the XMP profiles uh, in the BIOS settings. Now, just a quick summary of all of the internals on this laptop. You can see we have the Legion 9i with the i9-13980HX, RTX 4090, 32 gigs of DDR5-5600, or in my case, I actually ordered it with DDR5-6400. One terabyte SSD with an open M.2 slot available for upgrade, 3.2K, a uh, mini LED 165 Hertz rated at 1200 nits with 100% Adobe RGB. We actually tested the display only at 610 nits brightness, extremely high 
like 61,000 to one contrast for color though, uh, or for uh, contrast ratio. And our P3 color gamut did reach 100%, but our Adobe RGB actually only reached like, what was it, like 95, 96% or something like that. So not quite what they rated for the Adobe RGB. And this 1200 nits brightness has got to be peak brightness and not all around screen brightness because we definitely only saw 610 nits. So um, certainly something to keep in mind that, uh, that Lenovo is basically kind of cherry picking a little bit in terms of what stats they're showing there and not to expect 1200 nits for all around screen brightness level because it's not that. Um, webcam quality was just average. I think they like, especially for a really premium laptop like this, they need an upgraded webcam. Um, more detail, better color representation would be amazing. Uh, right, keyboard. Smaller wrist rest, though it works just fine for my hands. I also noticed that the wrist rest got fairly warm when gaming, which was a little bit, I guess, disappointing because the Legion Pro 7i basically has bigger wrist rest and the wrist rest stays cooler. It feels like because of uh, this laptop being thinner overall, more portable, it makes the wrist rest end up heating up a little bit more. And because it's thinner, we also saw basically lower sustained CPU performance out of the i9-13980HX. It's, it was, we only got about 28.4K in Cinebench R23 out of the box. Of course, you can undervolt this and push that score well above 30,000, but it's just not gonna be matching the very best spec laptops out there well at the same time costing what those laptops cost. So uh, it's a trade-off, basically. Uh, you're giving up some CPU performance when you're going for this laptop. Um, and uh, yeah, so Time Spy, shockingly good. Over 23,000 out of the box with no additional overclocking, just using the overclocking that the system came with was phenomenal. I was not expecting it to hit over 23,000 out of the box. So from a GPU performance perspective, it's excellent for any random user to get in there and just start playing games um, with no additional tweaking required. I didn't even turn on the overclocking. It was already turned on out of the box. The, uh, let's, let's see here. Um, the laptop control software, the Lenovo Vantage has a lot of features. You've got, uh, You've got battery conservation in there. You've got webcam settings. You've got RGB implementation for your, um, you got RGB implementation for controlling what the lights look like, but we ran into a bug where we couldn't turn off the outside lights and the keyboard lights were working. It was a little bit weird. Overall, it was, it, Lenovo Vantage is excellent. It provides a lot of functionality. You have good fan profile control. Um, and the fan noise in this was an interesting mixed bag where the max fans reached up to like 58, 59 decibels where, and you go down to balanced mode and it's like really quiet. Like I think it was only like 47 decibels. So the performance mode, 53 decibels, so you got a lot of variety, full, full speed max fans, very loud, balanced uh, performance mode, 53 decibels, that's moderate. And then it's balanced mode, though really tanked your wattage on your GPU down to only like 105 watts. So realistically, if you're wanting full performance, you gotta do at least performance mode and then you're gonna be getting at least 155 to 165 watts out of that GPU a lot of the time. Um, so I highly would recommend the performance mode if you're looking to get the most out of the laptop. Now, if you're looking for a quiet system, this system can provide that in the quiet mode or the balanced mode, but realistically the performance in those modes are not going to be nearly as good. So I feel like, I feel like, like the, my blade 18, for example, provides a better acoustic balance of performance versus the noise generation. Um, cause basically you're getting full performance out of the blade 18 at only 51 decibels. So that was like, it's a better balance, I think, versus this one. When you go to the quieter fan modes, you're really cutting down your performance. So if you want the full performance out of this machine, know that you're going to want to have headphones. 
Uh, speakers on this were very impressive. Lots of bass, very clear mids and highs. I think the overall volume could be better. And I think the mids and highs could be a little bit clearer. And that's primarily where I think the Blade 18 is still a bit better in terms of speakers. But you could certainly game on this, put this thing in balanced performance mode or maybe performance uh, performance, performance mode. And, uh, and that's gonna give you enough performance without being too fan noise heavy to where you're gonna be able to enjoy your games uh, and still play games. But it's uh, to me, it's still not the idea deal or as good of acoustic balance level of performance just because I feel like these fans are fairly loud if you're going to try to go to full levels of performance or at least at least 80 percent of performance and still have better fan noise it's just not as good now of course you can go into custom mode you could set your own custom fan profiles and probably find a little better balance in terms of acoustics gameplay quality and performance uh, along with mixing the sound quality. But the speakers on this overall, I would say are very, very good, uh, far above average. Uh, and I feel like you're getting your money's worth out of, out of the speakers. So just know that they're not quite the best available across the whole market though. They're, they're, they're very good though. Now, performance in games, let's talk about performance in games, especially with this ultra high resolution of 3,200 by 2,000. And that's a little bit more than 50% more pixels then QHD plus, so 2560 by 1600, even though the, the vertical pixels only go up 400, it's still over 50% increased rendering requirements to actually push out the pixels. Now in games with DLSS functionality, you, you can just drop another level down from quality down to balanced and you're basically gonna be getting you know, maybe similar levels of performance that you would get on QHD plus when you're at a higher DLSS level. So with games that support upscaling and you're using that upscaling, you can get around that resolution, the high resolution to get excellent frame rates in basically everything. And in fact, we did get very good frame rates in every single game, including, I mean, Starfield, we got 61 FPS at ultra settings preset at 3200 by 2000. So if you were to drop this thing down, uh, further down with upscaling or use DLSS or use frame generation mods in Starfield, for example, in those games, utilize all of the tools at your disposal. Even the 3200 by 2000 resolution appears to provide f playable frame rates with this, this, this laptop. And pretty much all the esports titles are going to be pushing well over hundred FPS. Um, with this current hardware, at least with the specs that I have here. And many of them will be pushing like into the 200, 300, 400 FPS range. Like in, in, in Counter-Strike 2, we were doing 250 to 400 FPS with Counter-Strike 2. In Warzone 2, we did about 132 FPS. In uh, God of War, we did 100 uh, FPS with the native resolution. Uh, of course, DLSS on quality with all the games that, that have that and support that. Cyberpunk 2077, we did uh, 80 FPS. Uh, Hogwarts, we were doing a little over 80, 84 FPS. Dead Space, 103 FPS. Though our 1% lows, I got to say our 1% lows were a little bit disappointing in certain titles, especially games like Dead Space. Um, Hogwarts, the 1% lows were good, but they weren't like exceptionally good. I was really hoping with the Legion 9i that our 1% lows would be like really, really amazing because of the 6400 RAM speed. But we weren't, we weren't seeing as high of 1% lows, for example, that we saw in the XMG Neo 17 with DDR4 6400 RAM, because we saw really good 1% lows, generally speaking, with that laptop uh, and with that, that RAM upgrade um, in general. Baldur's Gate 3, excellent FPS, 184 FPS. Witcher 3, uh, we were doing like around 90, a little over 90 FPS. So in general, and that was all, like I said, either DLSS on quality and if frame gen is available, we're enabling frame gen, uh, but ultra settings besides that and the full resolution on this display, I will be doing side-by-side -side testing with a Legion Pro 7i, and we're gonna do that at the same resolution. We're gonna drop the resolution on this guy down to 2560 by 1600. So we're matching the resolution on both laptops, and we're gonna do some side-by-side -side testing, and I'm gonna also have VRAM temperature 
testing. So this thing has an integrated water loop, but the problem is the integrated water loop really doesn't have a way for the heat to escape that water loop. And so my thoughts on the whole integrated water cooling is that yes, it's basically a gimmick. Uh, and I would have rather them probably put in additional just heat pipe cooling. Most likely that would have helped boost our CPU bound gaming performance to be a little bit better if they had just done another shared heat pipe um, with the space that the water cooler took up. So if they had actually integrated uh, the water cooling capability, because the, the back of the water cooler is comes right here. And it, it seems like the original design for this laptop actually would have had external ports on it that would have had like an external water cooler like the XMG Neo series, but it doesn't. So because there's no external water cooling radiator, there's just, it's basically a nothing burger. And I think it artificially inflates the cost of the laptop. The primary reasons to consider this laptop are the DDR5 6400 memory. But again, we didn't really see too much performance difference in most of the games that we saw. We saw excellent performance all around. Was it exceptional? Not really. It was very good though. Our performance was very good. Time spy scores were very good. The performance of the laptop in general, excellent. The display. I love the display, but at the same time, I wish it was 240 hertz refresh rate. That's the eSport gamer in me is like, I, I really love 240 hertz refresh rate. And the fact that when we did our display test, we only got 610 nits brightness. Makes me at least a little bit less excited about like, oh, this is the best of the best of the best. This is obviously extremely good. And when you have minimal pure whites on your display, you're gonna get that peaky 1200 nits brightness and it looks like blindingly bright. It's excellent. And it's very colorful, it's very bright, it's very contrasty. It's an excellent gaming display. You're gonna be super happy with the display. And the additional resolution I think makes this laptop uh, an excellent choice for someone who is gonna do like professional work. They want a high color gamut, they want high brightness. They're gonna be working in lots of different environments. Um, and uh, that additional color gamut is just gonna really boost the available capabilities for like uh, seeing the content at the, at like the same way it's gonna be visible on those high color gamut Samsung TVs. Like this is what that looks like. And it, it's gonna be excellent for watching movies. It's gonna be excellent for playing games. Um, it's just not a pure esports gamer, which is a little disappointing. And it's obviously going to make it a little bit harder to run the native resolution. But like I said, most games support upscaling. So in the case where you can't run it at the full native 3200 by 2000, you just use upscaling and you use like frame generation. And eventually you'll use as, as well FSR3 in, in some of the games that don't support frame gen or whatever. There's just going to be options to be able to take advantage of the resolution. But in general, I think, I think in general, I probably would prefer the QHD plus on like the SCAR 16, the Zephyrus M16, because it has that lower resolution that makes it easier to run games and it's a higher refresh rate. If you're a pure gamer, if you're an esports gamer, then going with one of those displays, I think just makes more sense. But if you're a professional at all, you can value those uh, additional pixels that you get, or you're a casual gamer that you just want the most detail in your games and not your you're not focused around the, uh, the refresh rate as much, then I think this one is very competitive and excellent, absolutely excellent. Um, the main downside, of course, with many LED displays is there is some blooming around bright objects on dark backgrounds. So certain situations like in Starfield, for example, maybe you'll see some blooming or depending on uh, the type of footage you're editing, you might see some artifacts because of the blooming. Just know to expect it and not be caught by surprise from it. Um, can I recommend the Legion 9i? This is where it's controversial. This thing is very, very high premium price for what you're getting. Um, and... If you're paying for all those bells and whistles, I was really hoping to have the king of performance on our hands. And I feel like Lenovo kind of messed things up a little bit in terms of being the ultimate performance king. Like they could have had the crown if they had an external water cooler, or maybe they could have had the crown if they just skipped the whole integrated water cooling 
and they just did heat pipes in this thing or a vapor chamber. They could have been, they could, I think they would have had a little bit better performance, honestly. Um, so in that sense, I think I feel like they messed up ergonomically as well. They had to mess with the ergonomics to have this big old, uh, air intake for this water cooling thing. I just, I just feel like it's not worth it, uh, from, from a design perspective. Now, in terms of value for the laptop, this is the only laptop that I know of that where you can, you can order it straight with the DDR5 6400 RAM. So in that sense, it's awesome. Uh, the display in some ways is the best display that you can get, but also in other ways, like I think it's a better balanced display than the Razer Blade 16 4K mini LED display because it's a lower resolution, more realistic resolution to actually play games at. But at the same time, it is higher than QHD+, and QHD+, is still, I think, a very good resolution, even for an 18-inch laptop. So in some ways, I wish they had just gone with the, the whole QHD+, 2560 by 1600, and made it a mini LED instead. But it is what it is, and some people are going to like this display more, and those people are mainly the people that value the extra pixels. Me, personally... I'd probably prefer to still go for the QHD plus um, display resolution on a 16 inch chassis in particular, just cause it's easier to run games. Um, and it probably will cost a little less as well in terms of premium cost. So I love, I absolutely love the keyboard on this. I wish the touchpad was a little bit bigger. Again, the whole design, the design motif of moving, moving the keyboard down, reduce the size of the touchpad. The touchpad is great. It feels really good, but it is smaller. So that's the that's the main downside there. Um, the RGB implementation is very bright and vibrant, uh, and this does have Windows Hello, but it's only a touchpad, a Touch ID here, no Windows camera for Windows Hello. So that's the the main thing to keep in mind there. Um, so again, can I recommend this? I feel like I, I feel like yes, I can recommend this, but it's not like it's my my number one pick. Um, in some ways, it is the most premium laptop because it does have the DDR5 6400 with arguably, for some people, the best display. But for me, I, I like my Blade 18's bigger display. Like, I like the 18-inch display. I like that it's um, a very... The, the, the Blade 18's display is not a mini-LED, but it's nearly as bright as this display, at least in terms of the way I measure it. Um... And I don't have to deal worry about bloom on the display with the Blade 18. So there's like, like I said, there's trade-offs. So is this the number one gaming laptop of the year? Like I could see why some people would pick it as their number one. If you value that higher resolution display in particular, I don't think this is the number one laptop probably because of ergonomics and because of, I guess, the thermals, uh, the CPU level, the CPU level of performance in the CPU is not as high as I was hoping it would be. Like I was expecting 145 consistent wattage to the CPU, just like we had on the Legion Pro 7i. And we didn't have that. We had better cooling in the Pro 7i. So um, in that sense, I feel like the Pro 7i has an advantage over this one, um, especially since the ergonomics on the Pro 7i are a little bit better. Although this one's more portable, this one definitely has a way better screen. Um, and uh, the speakers on this, I felt like maybe were a little better than the Pro 7i, but I don't know. I'll see you guys in the next one. Brandon out. Huzzah.